Welcome! Got one thing on sale, stranger. The choice of an avid Resident Evil 4 player. You'll need the game to play the game, stranger. <laughs> you had to buy it. Perhaps we ought to tune this game up, stranger. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Tune this game up, stranger. What? What is this? Ah, Resident Evil 4 has been completely remade and there are actually quite a few differences in the story, which will improve upon the Resident Evil 4 experience. Ah, you'll buy it at a high price, stranger. <laughs> Time to review it, I guess. Resident Evil 4 was a super fun game, but the current Resident Evil Remake's gameplay style is just an evolution of the original system from RE4, so did it really need a remake? Yeah. Yeah. Sadler todo poderoso. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Where's everyone going? Bingo? I played the hell out of Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube back in the day, but I hadn't played it a lot since, and after playing through the remake twice, I revisited the original game as well. I'm really glad I did actually revisit the original game because it did give me more appreciation for the new remake. At first I was kind of feeling like the remake was basically just Resident Evil 4, the slightly different edition with much nicer graphics. Who's going on police yet? You know what key? Uh, excuse me, sir? This is not good. I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. Sorry to have bothered you. You too, huh? Take care of yourself, buddy.
Thanks, bud. But they actually have improved quite a bit about the flow of the game and the story. And, I mean, really, let's compare some of my original gameplay capture from the GameCube, which really just shows how old Resident Evil 4 actually is. I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. But then again, maybe you did. <laughs> oh, you crazy American. Chief gave the orders himself. Help him, he said. I'm sure you boys didn't come all the way out here to roast marshmallows. <laughs> Maybe you did. One thing I'm obviously happy about is we have a stronger focus on survival horror, at least in parts of it anyway. Atmospherically, the remake delivers a much creepier version of Leon's trip to a small village in Spain to save the president's daughter, Ashley. Ashley. Ashley Graham, are you in here? Just let me go. Listen. Easy with that. My name's Leon. I'm here in the president's quarters and... That one will. Ashley! Don't come! Hey! Take it easy! No! Get away! Calm down. Everything's going to be just fine. My name's Leon. I'm under the president's order to rescue you. What? My father? That's right. And I have to get you out of here. Now come with me. Which is a bit of a cheesy plot and kind of screams the time that the original game was released. This is no ritual. It's terrorism. Isn't that a popular word these days? Well, the cheesiness overall is toned down in the remake. They've still got a lot of silly one-liners from Leon. <laughs> Sorry. Must have slipped. really starting to become a giant pain in my ass. Not bad, right? Sorry, I've had my fill of you guys. End of the line, asshole! Think about trying this yourself. Leon, are you kidding me? Jumping across chandeliers, seriously, who does that? <laughs> what are you, my mother? Such a fool, Mr. Kennedy. To have been bestowed with Lord Sadler. You talk too much. You failed! Also, I've got to say, the call sign they've given Ashley in the remake is on the level of any of the most silliest lines from the original. Roost, I've secured Baby Eagle. Copy that. Is she okay? Affirmative. Well done, Condor One. I'll dispatch a chopper ASAP. I'm sending you the coordinates for the extraction point. Make your way there, and don't let anything happen to Baby Eagle. Baby Eagle. I can't believe. President's daughter, Baby Eagle. I can't believe. Ashley Graham's character is a vast improvement in the remake, completely gone as the grating annoyance from her original incarnation. You all right? I'm fine! Just leave me alone! Ashley, wait! <laughs> Leon! Help! Help! This version 
version of Ashley is someone who tries to be much more helpful to Leon in these situations and feels like someone more likely to actually survive these events than the old Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Give me a sec, I'll get you out. <clears throat> hey! Try this! A wrecking ball. <clears throat> I got this. Hey. Is this what they teach kids in school these days? The new Ashley, though, is wearing a skirt instead of a skirt, so you can't get called a pervert anymore, which almost made me quit this game entirely. Oh, you pervert! Or maybe that didn't really matter much at all. Your mileage may vary. Another thing you really notice going back and forth between the remake and the original is how much dialogue they've added, just like characters discussing events afterwards and stuff. Hola, Luis here. You guys still around? Well, I wanted to go home, but Ashley just had to see this castle first. Perfect, because I have a present I want to give you. Give me a warning next time? <gasps> what was that? Do they keep animals down here or something? I've got a shotgun. It's you. What happened down there? Nothing. You were right about the animals, though. Leon? So I'm late. No. Thank you. Let's get rid of these things. For Luis. It's actually kind of shocking how abrupt some of this is looking back at the old RE4, where Leon will save Ashley and they have little or absolutely nothing to say about it to each other. Okay. Come on, let's get out of here. No way, Leon. Way? <gasps> Are you out of your mind? I knew you'd be fine if you landed on your butt. What is this? What? What is this? <clears throat> Come on, let's go. Merchant is also much chattier in the remake, which is a wonderful bonus because we can always use more merchant in our lives. <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. The merchant now calls out to you or says something when you're getting close to him, and will even warn you about treacherous areas coming up. I've got some new items in stock. <laughs> Come take a look. Might want to take care of any leftover errands before going this way. Be ashamed to live the rest of your life wondering, what if? Am I right? And while the original Merchant is iconic and very nostalgic to me, I do think there is a vast improvement with the voice acting with the new version. Over here, stranger. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. Over here, stranger. Who's that? Let's do some business then, eh? So that's a request done and dusted, eh? Good stuff, mate. Welcome. <laughs> well done. You've proven yourself reliable. Got some rare things on sale, stranger. Ah. I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, I'll buy it at a high price. Ah, that there's a real boomstick, mate. It will reduce your target to a bloody pulp. 
I still don't know how this guy seems to be kind of psychic or how he gets to all these places and stuff. It's kind of funny, really, thinking about the memos in RE4 where they're talking about Leon or Luis being an issue to the Los Illuminados cult's plans, when really, they should be trying to get that damn merchant. Leon wouldn't have made it through his journey without the merchant. I'm really the most important character in the game, stranger. Leon gets most of his armament from the merchant, and that's how he upgrades anything. And really, Los Illuminados is pretty damn dense to be missing this guy. I mean, he's not very subtle. He's even gone around building shooting ranges just for fun and to award prizes to Leon. Friends, it's a bully bonanza. Fire everything you've got. Look at that. I love that he says that, because imagining the merchant making the shooting ranges is kind of insane, stranger. The merchant has even put one of these shooting range minigames up in Salazar's castle. How did he and the Los Illuminados miss all that construction going on? I say all this half-joking, of course, but I really do love how little sense the merchant makes in either version of the game. I was always kind of bothered, too, by Leon's lack of at least attempting to give the merchant a heads up when the island you're on at the end of the game is about to explode. Especially in the original, because you can see one of his shop locations as you make your escape. Then again, the merchant seems to be magic. You could even shoot him back in 2005 and he'd get over it. Got something that might interest you. And while the remake doesn't allow direct fire on him, you can fire a rocket launcher towards his direction and it just makes him pause sails for a few seconds. Welcome. Do you believe in magic at a high price, stranger? <laughs> you can't kill the merchants. You know, we've had a lot of character side quests in Resident Evil games. We had two for Ada in the old RE4, and we even had a piece of tofu for one in RE2. Seriously, we really need Merchant's Quest as DLC for the new Resident Evil 4. Fella, come back when you can actually pay. And speaking of the merchant, they've simplified the treasure system in a good way for the remake. Before, you need specific gems to combine into certain treasures to increase their value. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. And a lot of the time, you'd probably miss one and not be able to complete a treasure and get the highest price for it, where now the gems come in two main varieties. Oval shaped and rectangular, and you just make different combos with the colors. It's also kind of nice too that the little figurines you get from the merchant from playing his minigame now award little bonuses instead of just being a collectible. This proved especially useful with the Leon with a rocket launcher one, which gives you 20% off a rocket launcher purchase from the merchant. All my wares are in tip-top shape, I assure you. And that includes the infinite rocket launcher you unlock on your second playthrough, which drops the price from 2 million to 1 million 600,000. <laughs> well now, time to cause some mayhem. No use. Just wasting ammo. Another one. Adios, you 
son of a bitch. One thing that kind of shocked me actually playing through both versions of the game was how much the control over Leon has changed. As the current Resident Evil gameplay system is an evolution of the one that started in RE4, obviously this remake isn't quite as large of a departure as the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes were from their original incarnations. However, Leon really does move around much easier in the remake compared to his kind of sluggish by comparison movement he used to have. You really need to rely on that quick turn mechanic before, where you can just easily turn Leon and have him look wherever you want much easier now. One thing, however, I really felt was missing when I started playing the RE4 remake was the laser sight. A laser sight was just standard on all of your firearms in RE4 and made the free aim feel pretty good. You get crosshairs in the remake, but I really just wanted the laser sight back. Now you can get one to attach to your pistol a bit later on, and it really helps, especially as shooting blue medallions and treasures suspended way above you. It kind of sucks though that the laser sight is not compatible with every gun, which made me pass on getting what was usually my favorite pistol from the original, the Red 9. However, the Sentinel 9 made for a decent replacement, especially when you got the exclusive upgrade for it which upped its critical hit chance and you get almost as many head pops as you did with the Red 9. Now one of the biggest gameplay elements dropped from the original Resident Evil 4 was the quick time events, which is something that made me cry for an hours straight until I remembered I never really liked them all that much in the first place. I'm sure some of you out there enjoy having to mash buttons or press buttons suddenly during a cutscene or die, but I enjoy quick times in games about as much as I do the movie file format. Quick time files? What a nerdy reference! What is this? There are some parts where the remake prompts you to press a button repeatedly, like to break free of an enemy or something, but these can be nicely changed to just holding the button down. Now, obviously, one of the biggest quick time events in the original was the knife battle with stupid Krauser. After all, you and I both know where we come from. <laughs> all for Umbrella's sake. Umbrella? Almost let it slip. You did let it slip. You blatantly said it, you idiot. Enough talk. Die, comrade. <laughs> this battle got completely reworked into a knife battle with the regular game mechanics, which was definitely a plus for me. Operation Javier. What the hell you got? Really? I forgot how annoying the quick time events could actually be until I screwed up the one they throw at you after the minecart ride section, which causes you to have to repeat that whole part again, which is not quick. And I was kind of trying to play through the original as quickly as I could so I could finally make this video, and having to repeat a rather large section just because I didn't press a button at the right time wasn't really appreciated. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. It didn't help too that I was playing on Steam with a PS4 controller and then it gives you the Xbox controller button prompts on screen. Now, if you do have to continue any time in the remake, it's pretty good about not making you repeat a lot. One part quite a few of you probably will have to repeat is a bit that was annoying in the original and it's annoying remade as well. The catapult barrage once Leon and Ashley are performing their old castle siege can get quite annoying. Ashley! You are right. Yeah, I'm fine. You're supposed to raise a cannon and take them out, but it's kind of constant with them launching explosives at you, and you can get stuck trying to pick Ashley up over and over if she gets hit. You okay? Yeah. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. It was actually a bit easier to shoot some explosive barrels by these catapults in the original to take them out. 
This and the Del Lago boss battle were some of the most frustrating bits of the game for me. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. Del Lago was another one that could be a bit annoying, especially on the higher difficulties in the original, but you could heal Leon if you really needed to. In the remake, you're going by the boat's health, and the boat doesn't like to eat herbs quite as much as Leon. <laughs> And I'm sure because I said I found a few parts annoying, someone's gonna let me know that they beat that part easily and blah blah blah, whatever, good for you, you win, you're better than me. The room I remember dreading the most though, the one where you have to boost Ashley up and turn the cranks and protect her, was actually not that hard at all for me this time around in both versions. Another little frustrating thing I had though is where the game glitched as as approaching a cutscene flag where you're trying to save Ashley from Sadler. But the game just got stuck on a loading screen forever. I ended up having to quit the game and restart, but luckily the autosave had my back so I started right back in the same room and the cutscene played correctly the second time. And yes, during one of my playthroughs, I decided to make Leon look a bit more Johnny Cage. This obviously makes Leon a little cooler, you know, especially with the ladies. And really, it was pretty easy for Leon to be cooler with the ladies than he was in the original. Hey, Hunnigan, no glasses. Forget the glasses. What's the status of the mission? I've rescued the subject. We're returning home. You did it, Leon. Thanks. You know, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. Oh, shut up, Leon. You need glasses in your old-timey suit so you look like a villain from Indiana Jones or something. Really, you do get a nice selection of silly outfits for the characters in the remake. So tell me, Yankee, why did you come to this horrible place? Let's just say, looking for someone. That someone must be very important, huh? Yeah, this evil lumberjack with the glowing red eyes seems on the level. We like him. There's also a kind of funny bit where Leon wearing a costume with gloves kind of makes the cutscene not make much sense as Ashley's supposed to see Leon has been infected with Lost Plagas as well. That was something else. <laughs> oh, she must have been terrifying now. I know. <gasps> you too? That was something else. <laughs> oh, she must have been terrifying now. I know. You too? So, just like with the Resident Evil 3 remake, they've removed sections from the original game here. However, unlike with RE3, I don't really miss the sections they removed from RE4, and I feel like they've added enough in other areas to make up for it. A lot of the gimmicky trap parts are removed, like the bits with the swinging blades in the castle, or those stupid crushers during one of the many underground segments. Speaking of, they thankfully cut out some parts that involved more underground and didn't really do much atmospherically. Like the ruins section. I kind of forgot about this part until I played Old 4, and with good reason. The only bit I remembered from this section was the minecart bit, which I kind of, in my head thought happened in the mines. And putting the minecart section in the actual mines is exactly what the remake did, which you know kind of makes sense. You also have Luis taking this ride with you now, which I think makes it a bit more interesting. There, it's moving. This should speed things up a bit. I can't believe I'm doing this. Hey, we're in a hurry, right? They remove the kind of silly bit where you have to jump across the hands of the giant Salazar statue, and of course, the quick time event of running away from the thing. Oh, yeah! You do still have to deal with the statue, but it's been moved to when you're doing the climb up the clock tower and it can now breathe fire at you. Speaking of fire, that does remind me of one room I did kind of miss from the original. You know, the Zelda room. 
There is one room that just really remind me of a dungeon from a Zelda game in the castle where you're surrounded by lava and the Lost Illuminados are coming down in stone dragons trying to fire you. It was ridiculous, but I kind of loved how over the top that room was. And of course, once you took out one of the Lost Illuminados, you get rewarded with a chest. <laughs> The absolute biggest loss the remake suffers, though, is no laser room. You know, there's one thing that I always say, and that's that Resident Evil needs more lasers. In all seriousness though, I do miss the silly part after the lasers where Leon could sit in Sadler's chair. The remake also removed yet another underground section where you have the U3 boss battle, which is a bit of a loss, I suppose. There probably could have been a neat way to reimagine that. You could even imagine it somewhere else, not underground. There's still enough underground in the remake, but some of those parts are a bit more visually interesting. And I don't feel like they overstay their welcome quite as often as they did before. Especially that ruins part. I mean, that whole section just feels too disconnected to anything going on in the story. Really, a lot of the sections removed for the remake kind of felt that way a bit, so I get why they were chopped out. You even find the fossilized remains of the Plagas first in the proper mine section, so the underground archaeological dig site doesn't serve any real purpose and nothing happens there. They made the Plaga Parasite Resurrection feel a bit more Jurassic Park in the remake as they were found in Amber. Now a lot of areas have been expanded, so there's a lot more to explore and find, like in the whole village area and farm nearby. Originally you could pretty much run right through the farm, and now you have to get a gate open before getting through that area. There were quite a few times playing the original back where I thought, oh, I'm already at this part because of how much they had added. They did at least keep the Plaga Boy that you interrupt on the toilet, though this time his toilet probably makes a bit more sense. The toilet the villager is using at Mendez's pad is now like an outhouse hole instead of Mendez confusingly only having a urinal. Like, how does he use the toilet paper in there? These are the important questions to ask. There is a lot more area added around Chief Mendez's house, including an abandoned factory, which is where you get taken after you're captured by Mendez and tied up with Luis Serra. <laughs> Sacrificial lamb, you will receive our most sacred body. It begins now. Oh, what the fuck? Hey, stop it. Hey, Yankee. Got your name? Leon. <laughs> Soon, you will become unable to resist this intoxicating power. <clears throat> hey. Hey, wake up. Yay! Crawl out of one hole and into another. 
In the remake at this part, you find all your weapons have been taken, which kind of makes more sense than stupid Mendez capturing you but saying, Leave a shotgun and all the stuff on him, it's fine. This is where the remake introduces being able to crouch and do stealth kills on enemies, which is something extremely useful, and I really miss this mechanic going back to the old game. <laughs> Just being able to crouch helps a lot, especially with how often the Lost Plaga infectees throw things at you. There was one time though where I was trying to be stealthy and then a cow took out Ashley. I'm definitely gonna catch a cold. Yeah. Back up. There's a new part I thought was pretty creepy too where night has fallen and you just hear the cult members chanting from the woods around you. The whole lakeside area has had a massive update and you get to do a lot more with the boat than you ever did before as you explore a bunch of areas around there, which was pretty fun and felt like areas natural to be there. Unfortunately, the kind of creepy atmosphere still kind of takes a backseat once you get to the damn island in the remake. Large parts of the island section of the game are still some of my least favorite in RE4 because of the heavy focus on chaotic action instead of any kind of survival horror. Next. Especially once you get to that chopper pilot Mike helping you and occasionally shooting you. wasn't too broken up like Mike was when he got blown away by a rocket launcher, or taken down by bugs in the new version of the story. Which, by the way, were enemies I didn't find nearly as irritating in the remake as they were before. There's some things that were just kind of around in the original they turned into side quests that the merchant gives you, like this bit with the twin graves you're actually sent out to find and smash up. A job well done deserves payment in kind. Because the twins sucked! I guess? The dining room in the castle was a spot you didn't really do much in before, but now there's a puzzle for a key item in there. Leon! Looks like we figured it out. The facility where you first encounter the Regenerators has been expanded quite a bit and made more interesting looking as it kind of seemed like a building mostly made out of hallways in the original.
the part of the game where you're put in control of Ashley Graham is also much larger and much creepier. <sighs> I won't run. I kind of love this part here too, as it's a reference to one of the earlier builds of Resident Evil 4. The beta version of RE4 is going to be much more survival horror based where Leon was suffering hallucinations, which they also added back in with this remake. <laughs> there's much more of a focus on Leon and Ashley being infested by Las Plagas in the remake. <coughs> you better do something about that cough. Ashley even attacks Leon at one point after briefly falling under Las Plagas' control, which leads to some much better character moments with them than before. Worry about your own skin. <laughs> forward. We will beat this. Together. I don't know if I can. You can. Just give me a heads up before you stab me next time, okay? <laughs> Leon, I... Thanks. In the original at this part, Ashley just kind of ran off like an idiot into a very specific trap. You all right? I'm fine! Leave me alone! Ashley, wait! <laughs> About near death experience. And of no, Ashley gets to become a master of unlocking in the remake, which automatically makes her a way better version of this character. <laughs> uh, pretty much a master of unlocking. Shut up! It's kind of funny too, noticing that once Leon and Ashley get to the equipment that can remove the Plaga Parasite from their bodies, in the remake Leon insists that they get it out of Ashley first, where originally he's like, screw you Ashley, I'm going first. You go first. No way. Like I told you, I'm gonna get you home safe. <laughs> You operate. You sure you want to do this? Yeah. All right. How are you feeling? Like a million bucks. Hello? What? Talk about the radio sequences? All right, fine. I don't know why you look so anxious about this. 
I also don't know how I'm looking at you. Because there's always a bit of magic around with the merchant stranger. So gone are the Metal Gear Solid-esque radio calls where somehow it's a video call, even though every time one starts you just see Leon holding a radio up to his ear. You still have some comms calls, but instead of being locked into a cutscene, you can walk around during them. However, the video aspect of them still makes about as much sense as it ever did as Leon puts his hand up to an earpiece, and unless he's wearing an outfit with glasses which are also video glasses, I don't know how he's seeing anyone. Condor One to Roost. Do you read me? Condor One? You've been radio silent for three hours. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Won't let it happen again. And the church? I'm still looking for whatever key I need. Copy that. Copy that. I also miss the part where you can run past the church where the Los Illuminados are holding Ashley and Hunnigan will call you up to chastise you. Leon, have you reached the church yet? Uh, well, yeah. Sort of. Leon, did I mention not to take the scenic route? Uh... Of course, the church is actually locked, and you do have to run past the church anyway to get the key, so way to waste our time, Hunnigan! They also did away with the villains calling you up on the radio and chatting you up a bunch. Well, it appears that this castle's also connected with the Los Illuminados. I need you to... What? Repeat, Hunnigan. Hunnigan, what happened? The transmission got cut off. <laughs> Salazar, how'd you- We've jacked the line. We didn't want you telling everyone any unnecessary information. Where's Ashley? Ah, oh, so she fell into one of our wonderful traps. I see why they removed Salazar and Sadler calling Leon, as it kind of makes them feel less threatening. Ah, oh, what a touching moment we have here. All spoiled thanks to your interruption. Why don't you do us all a favor and leave before the audience gets pissed off? <laughs> You're nothing but an extra in my script, so don't get too carried away. Your biggest scene is over. I don't ever remember being a part of your crappy script. I will say, though, it did make them a bit more memorable since Leon interacted with them more in this fashion. Since you're here, why don't I introduce you to It? It should keep you busy. Can't remember the name, huh? A senior moment, perhaps. Oh, the. Uh... <laughs> don't tell me you've never swatted a bothersome fly. Sadler, you bastard! Oh. <laughs> you also miss out on one of the most important Leon lines ever. Sadler, why don't you give up and let Ashley go home? Perhaps you are disillusioned with overconfidence, just because you killed my small-time subordinate. Sadler, you're small-time. Sadler, you're small-time. 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 No. Oh. <laughs> Rive in my cage of torment, my friend. Thanks. They did keep your small time as the achievement name for when you beat Sadler at the end. I'll give you a holy body. No. Oh. <laughs> now, Salazar was kind of a more entertaining villain before, but he was much campier. Not to worry. We've prepared a special ritual for you. <laughs> Stop! Such a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance, Mr. Kennedy. Who the hell are you? Me? Oh, please, call me Ramu and allow me to get straight to the point. I would like you to hand the girl. Over to me. Now. Yeah, fat chance, Ramon. Mr. Kennedy. Don't you know when it's time to throw in the towel? <laughs> hmm. Where's the satisfying sound of one's impalement? Don't fall for this old trick. Ah! How dare you! No more games! Kill him! 
You are nothing, if not unyielding, Mr. Kennedy. However, I'm afraid it ends here. Expel this intruder! It's kind of like the RE1 remake versus the original. Either you want something a bit more silly or something more threatening. With Salazar and Sadler ringing you up to chat about what they've done all the time, they kind of become silly cartoon villains instead of being kept more menacing. Which is the tone the remake tries to hit much more often. When you've acquired this power, you too will understand. Guess it's another good reason to get the parasite out of my body. <laughs> I wish you luck. Thanks. Sadler! <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the time has come for this lamb to join our covenant. Oh, blessings unto him and the sweet mercy they bring. Exalt all and let it be so. Thanks. Chief Mendez is kind of an intimidating figure in both versions of the game as he's just kind of a giant threat that doesn't blab about his accomplishments to you. I thought they might kind of turn him into that constant threat you need to avoid like Mr. X or Nemesis, but they kept it to just one section where you need to run away from him. And really, I'm good with that. That doesn't need to be in every Resident Evil game. Jack Krauser was never one of my favorite bits from RE4. He's just kind of guile from Street Fighter if he turned evil. Leave Ashley out of this! Oh, I needed her to buy Sadler's trust in me. Like you, I'm American. The story has been changed a fair amount between the two versions, though. Originally, he was someone that Leon was paired up with for his missions after he became a special agent following the events of Raccoon City from RE2. Enjoy the reunion with your old friend. As a matter of fact, I did. Wonderful. I wouldn't want my special guests on the island feeling unattended. Thanks. In the remake, he was the one who trained Leon after he's kind of forced into becoming an agent. That night, Raccoon City was wiped out, thanks to the bioweapons created by Umbrella. Somehow I made it out. I was asked, later, to join a top-secret government program. Not that I had a choice. The training. Punishing missions nearly killed me. But at least I kept my mind off everything. Krauser originally was just infiltrating Los Illuminados to get a dominant species Plaga on behalf of old Wesker. Just so we understand each other clearly, I don't trust you, nor does Wesker. Wesker! In the remake, Krauser, I guess, became disillusioned a bit with what he is doing as a soldier and became a faithful cult member of Los Illuminados. The second boss battle of him has also been made less annoying in the remake as it's kind of easy to get turned around and lost in. Also, during the last part of it, they put you on a timer so you could still lose even if you'd already defeated Krauser. Where's Ashley? She's beyond that gate, but you'll need three insignias to open it. Now, it's just a boss battle, and you move on. They did, though, try to make it hit a bit harder as a story beat. You've demonstrated quite a bit of promise by killing Krauser. When your assimilation with Las Plagas is complete, I'll have you serve as my guard. Thanks. Two of the biggest improvements storyline-wise, though, would have to be Luis Serra and Ada's character journeys. Luis Serra has been made a much more interesting character in the remake. You ready to go? Don't worry about me. Ashley is the priority. In that case, we know what we have to do. Then come, Sancho Panza! Let us rescue the Princess Dulcinea! You're gonna hurt yourself. Hey, that was my dance. Okay, we hurry, I get it. Luis Serra was originally a researcher at Umbrella, but this is highlighted in the story much more in the remake than it was before. Someone had a field day loot in the Umbrella Labs. A little hard for me to put my faith in someone who used to work for Umbrella. So you heard, huh? Umbrella's done for. You don't need to worry about them anymore. You didn't answer my question. What are you after? 
I just want to feel good about myself. Make amends. Or something like that. Before you found out a lot about him just through notes and after his death, where now it's more of a story that he's a character who's trying to make up for his past. Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics too. How rude! And with a past like that, he has a lot to make up for. Luis lasts a lot longer in the remake as he teams up with Leon not only during the survival moment where the Plagas are attacking the cabin you're holding up in, but also during the section where you go through the mines, which makes this part a bit more interesting and gives you more time to care about Luis as a character. And then he dies. It's kind of abrupt in both versions, but it's more of a gut punch in the remake, where in the original he just kind of dies before you care that much. Be straight with me for once. Los Illuminados. I was working for them. See? There you go. Helping the two of you doesn't make up for it. I know that. But still, I don't want anyone else to get hurt. We made it all this way. You know it means we're almost... Almost what? <coughs> Lewis! <coughs> Lewis! <coughs> Stay with me, Lewis. Lewis! Lewis! And it sounds more like his name is Lewis than Luis. He was killed off by Sadler before, but this was changed to Krauser, which gives you more drive to kill that numbnut. And Luis's death is given much more gravitas. The sample. Sadler took it. You have to get it back. I'm not looking good, eh, my friend? And such a loss to the ladies of the world. Take this. The key to my laboratory. Go there and remove those damn parasites. <coughs> you know, I led a pretty shitty life. But now, eh? <clears throat> what do you think, Leon? People can change, right? A person being able to change is also a main theme in Ada's storyline, which is something that's just not present at all before. Bit of advice, try using knives next time. Works better for close encounters. Leon. Long time no see. Ada. So it is true. True? About what? You, working with Wesker. I see you've been doing your homework. Raccoon City. You know, after the incident, the world changed. You try to save one person, a hundred others die. I guess I changed too. <laughs> you. Leon S. Kennedy. You haven't changed. You just think you have. Have you changed, Ada? Also, Ada is not in a cocktail dress. Got some business to take care of. See you later. I used to think there was some kind of explanation about her being on some mission that explained the cocktail dress, but I guess there just really wasn't one. You can get a charm from the merchant where she's still wearing it though, which proves that the merchant can also move between dimensions. There's nothing that I, a simple interdimensional merchant, can't do, stranger. I really like Ada's story in the remake, as it's just kind of smuggy smug in the original and ends on not a lot of answers. Better get a move on. See you around. Right here. You coming? 
I think we both know this. It's where we go our separate ways. I see. Here, they've made it more of a complete story where she has an arc, ultimately deciding that, yep, she has changed. I've obtained the amber. Because a new dawn is breaking. A hundred will give their lives so that just one may live. I am expediting that change. So, we're talking millions of casualties. Billions. How ambitious. We're changing course. Of course, Wesker's an idiot not to read anything into Ada asking him about that and just laughing about how evil he is. It's kind of funny, though, with the stronger and overall more serious storytelling that the remake kind of ends like a James Bond movie with Hunnigan not able to contact Leon as he rides off with Ashley. Mission accomplished, right? Mission accomplished. Rooster Condor 1, do you read me? Come in. I said, come in, is this thing even on? Leon, Leon, are you and Ashley all right? Where are you? Come on! Overall, it's still Resident Evil 4 and it's still a lot of fun and they've refreshed it in ways that are all mostly positive. So I'll see you in the remake of this review, stranger. my Code Veronica remake, stranger.